Uh, hello guys. Uh, today I'm going to show you guys how to uh, release the sand flies and also how we maintain the sand fly colony. Exactly. Before anything starts, I want to uh, explain to you a little bit about the roof. First of all, we keep the roof at a certain temperature. We keep it at 26 uh, degrees Celsius and we keep it around 76% humidity. Uh, so this room is like a big incubator. So to make that clear, it's like a big incubator. We keep this room at 26 degrees Celsius, 70, uh, 68 degrees uh, humidity. So uh, one thing I'm going to show you guys now is how to release the flies. Something very simple, very easy to do, but just watch me do it and I'll explain some tasks along the way. So here are the pots that I'll be releasing today. I'll be releasing uh, the pots. This is uh, Lutsamaya longipapus uh, Jacobina. Uh, this is one of our high consumption colonies. It's used a lot during uh, experiments. It's the one that we use the most. So remember, we always keep the cages tied, but we untie it a little bit, open up the leaf, sleeve, put the sleeve inside a little bit, so the flies won't tend to escape. We grab one of the pots, we open it up outside the sleeve, but we open it up only until it's very loose so we can just smoothly take the lid off once it goes inside the cage. So you see, it's about to come off. So I put it inside the cage, open up the sleeves. It's on. Okay. Now that I'm inside the cage, it's very important that we open it up slowly and we tap the lid inside the pot. This is so we won't lose any material, any of the uh, pupae on the lids or any of the pupae around the pots. Because if that will happen, we will lose um, flies that will be emerging down here in the cage and we do not want that. So we tap it inside the cage, tap a couple times, we let it go out. We blow our hands so no flies will come escape. And you don't want escaping flies, especially if you have a small colony. If you have lots of escaping flies, then eventually you'll just lose like one today, two tomorrow, eventually you lose like 200 per week and you don't want that. So we leave it in there for a couple seconds, we usually release more, more pots at a time, we around four per cage. So we leave it in here maybe uh, roughly around like a minute or two. So after we do that, we go back inside. And then we grab the lid. And we put the lid back on top of the cage and then we tighten it. We tighten the lid. It's not going to be tight all the way. You're going to have to finish slicing, tightening once you get outside the cage. But then you grab it in here, you blow air inside so your flies won't stick to the lid and they won't try to escape inside. Okay, remember, keep the, uh, the mesh inside, keep the lids inside. Next thing you do is now you want to finalize it, finalize and tighten the lid. You tighten it up and then you want to shake it. You want to tap the pot just a little bit just so you can move uh, what's inside the pot all over. Just tap, tap, tap. And then you put it back inside the pot and you close. Boom. And then you release the other one. Okay. Remember, you always Tighten the sleeve of the cage. Always tighten the sleeve of the cage. If you leave it out, you know the escape is one important thing also. The sleeve must be always kept inside the cage. It can never be kept outside. One reason is that if you keep uh, the sleeve outside the cage like this, the flies will come uh, inside the sleeve and be um, around this area. And then the flies will then, when, when you open it up, they will tend to escape. So you always put it inside, inside the, inside the cage. And this is a regular plexiglass case that we use. And then if you guys uh, can't afford a case like this, we do have a, uh, there is a case available that's this, it's called a dorm cage. It's the exact same thing, uh, it's used it, so yeah, the dorm cage. Now, after you finish releasing, uh, you always put the date on the cage, you know, you put LLJB and uh, today's date. Okay, uh, the next, okay. so the next thing we'll be doing, I'll show you guys how to get uh, sugar water. So, uh, the few things you need for the sugar water, you need uh, long forceps, you need sugar, 
Uh, this sugar is just regular commercial sugar. You can buy at any uh, supermarket or any market. And then you need uh, cotton cords. And uh, make sure you always wear gloves to this. You don't want any bacteria carrying from your hand to the sandfly cage or anything. So now let's open the sandfly cage. And now we'll grab sugar water. Okay. So the sugar, I already, this is already, I pre-made this already. One of the important things about the sugar here is that we keep 30% uh, sugar, but we use a uh, 50 ml falcon tube. In the 50 ml falcon tube, we use 15% uh, sugar, like I said, any commercial regular sugar, and then we fill it up all the way to the rest of the 50 with just DI water. Okay, so remember, 15% uh, to sugar, and then we fill it up with DI water. So just remember, it's DI water, regular, not regular water, DI water. So what we do now is just open the falcon tube, and remember, we use gloves. We always use gloves. It's a very important thing that we use gloves. So I have the falcon tube in here, and then I put the cotton cords inside. Put a couple inside of here. Put a couple inside of here. And then I use the forceps that I have to put it inside the sugar. Let it be, let the uh, cotton absorb uh, the sugar water fully. So give it, a, give it its time. So then, what you do, you grab the sugar from the top of it and you squeeze it out. You don't want no dripping sugar water on top of your cake. You squeeze it on the side of the tube. And you put it on the cage. Grab another one. You do not want to squeeze it too tight and uh, squeeze out all the sugar water, but you want to squeeze it enough so there's no dripping sugar coming from the cotton cords. And then I usually put two per tube. This is just to give you a small demonstration of what we do. And you want to put the sugar all over the cage. So uh, one of the next steps we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, give sugar to the colony we already caught it up. Uh, so I'm gonna show you guys the incubator that we keep them in and uh, how we give sugar and how we maintain a colony clean. One of the important things about being here is that we maintain everything very clean. The flies, we don't want any of the bacteria getting on the flies or any of the bacteria getting on anywhere. So the first thing I do is uh, I go inside the uh, incubator. Uh, let me show you this incubator. Uh, so this is a uh, first of all uh, incubator. So the first of all incubator is basically kept at uh, 27.1 degrees uh, Celsius and around 92% humidity. It's a little bit uh, warmer than it is in this room just because we need uh, the humidity to be strong, uh, to be higher for the flies so they can uh, lay their eggs. So I'm going to open up the incubator for you. So this is our, uh, these are our flies here. And uh, this is the mesh. Okay, so uh, another important uh, fact is that uh, for Lutzemeyer longipopus, one of the proven facts we have learned that it needs to be kept with darker mesh. Um, this is true because with darker mesh, they tend to lay more eggs. And that's the final goal. We want our Lutzemeyer longipopus to lay more eggs. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean the top of the meshes. This is to eliminate any of the uh, sugar water left over, any of the residue left over. So I'm going to grab some 70% uh, ethanol. So I'm going to grab some 70% ethanol, and then I'm going to squirt it into a paper towel. You squirt into the paper towel, not into the pot, because you don't want the ethanol getting inside the pot. Okay. Spray the paper towel. And then I like to fold it a little bit. And then you want to scrub the remaining sugar water on top of the pot. Do it gently. If you do it too um, too hard, then the then the mesh will collapse inside the pot, and you don't want that. And you don't want to do it too softly either, or else you're not uh, scrubbing away the remaining sugar water. Most of it will go all the way. So if you go like this, 
most of it will go away. As you see, there is some right there. There's some other remaining sugar water there. So then you do it to all the pots. Okay, I'm gonna just demonstrate these two for you. Okay, so uh, right now I'm gonna dip sugar water. Um, it's the same technique as we did for the cages. So what we do is we grab the, uh, the sugar water cotton cord out and we squeeze it against the tube. We're gonna squeeze it, don't squeeze it too hard to remove all the sugar, but you wanna squeeze it just enough so there's no dripping sugar water. So you put one, you put one for, uh, for Ogi Pot. Now the next step is very important, is that we must put two sponges inside um, inside the, uh, the bin. This is so it can keep the it can keep a humidity inside. We need this humidity so the flies will lay more eggs. So we put two sponges inside, and then we grab the lid. One important thing about the lid and these bins is that they must close. So you're gonna hear a little noise. Make sure the lid is closed. Okay. So, okay, so the next step I want to show you guys is um, our weekly log. This is where we keep track of what we do. So we keep track of one of the other things. So uh, one of the activities that we do is that uh, we blood feed the colony. We just blood feed them twice a week. Uh, and you can tell the cages are blood fed because we keep a uh, red tape on our cages, which means that these uh, cages have already been blood fed. So that can be demonstrated. Here's a close look at the log. We give sugar water every day, Monday through Friday. This is so the flies have a, um, a good source. Food? Okay, and then, uh, okay, and then this is our log. Okay, uh, the next step that I want to explain to you is my uh, organization of, of the bins, why some of them, why some of the pots are outside with no top or lid or anything, and then while some of them are closed. So our organization is basically that we keep the the oldest pots, the ones that have been the longest, uh, outside. Because these flies are these pots, these are pots that have given very, very little flies, or they have no, or they give no flies at all. Uh, they need the less humidity possible. And then we work up. I like to call this like a little, a little snake. We go from here to here, then here, and everything. So uh, one thing about these bins is that they have. Uh, two sponges each, then the sponge here, the sponge over here. We keep them with humidity closed. So just remember, uh, these bins here that are releasing, as the same as the ones inside the incubator, we must both have two sponges each. Aside from having just a uh, Lutzen Biologic Harvest Colony, we also have a Phlebotomist to Boston Colony from, from Mali. As you can see here, um, as you can see here, the colony in, in this uh, cage has reached about full capacity, which is in the range from 2,000 to 2,500 uh, flies. Okay. Uh, one of the other things I'd like to emphasize is that uh, from Hyde, we have a total of four colonies, but two major colonies, uh Island Caucus and Bottom of Boston. Uh, also we like to uh, because we have two different major colonies and we have four in total, we like to color code everything. Everything must be color coded in order to in order for us not to cross contaminate the colony. Uh, which is very important, you do not want to cross contaminate the colony. Uh, so as you can see here, our bottom is the Boston, the green color. Uh, all this area back here is along with the Boston also. The green color, and then our Lutzen Biological Office uh, color is yellow. 
you can decide for your own what color you want to choose or anything, just make sure you stick to it. Um, as you can see, our room everywhere, all these flies here are the flies that we see for a lot of it's velocity. And these are our five of these screens my lunch box. And then I want to thank you guys for watching and all you say about enthusiasts and thank you again.